Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, <coughs> so I'm going to present the paper. Uh, the title is called RB, I will explain RB later on. RB allocations using complete graph for D2D communication. And I'm Professor Sang Ling Xiu with my graduate student, Cho Yanjie, Yanjie Cho. And we are from the Department of Electrical Engineering, National Sun Yat-sen University. It's located in Kaohsiung City, Taiwan. It's here. Uh, here, the restaurant. Okay, the, uh, as I promise, I will make it quick. <coughs> the alternate as follows. I will give you a brief introduction and uh, some related work. Then I will come to my research work, RACG. And uh, the, in the fourth section, I will present simulation and the discussions. Finally, will be my conclusions. <laughs> okay. Um, motivation of this paper, uh, because we are going to pre, uh, propose a new methodology for D2D, which means device to device communications. So we are going to use a new technology called the frequency reuse because, uh, because for the limited radio resources. So we needed to invent some methodology. It's called the frequency reuse, which is the purpose of uh, increase entire system capacity in terms of the channels. Okay, so what is RB? RB means resource block. Resource block, I will give you a, a, a diagram later on. Okay, so we are going to introduce a method, it's called the uh, uh, resource allocation using complete graph, or abbreviated by RACG, or ICG. So the basic idea is we try to convert interference <coughs> among D2D pairs to an interference graph. Then we choose the D2D pair to allocate the source block based on the priority. Okay? The diagram shows the 4G or 5G, the fourth generation or fifth generation uh, mobile cell communications. And the, <coughs> the, the diagram shows you it's an OFDMA frame. As you can see, the y-axis is the frequency subcarrier. The x-axis is the time domain. So frequency domain on the y-axis and the time domain on the uh, x-axis. So you see, there's a, a resource block. One resource block, uh, you may see, that consists of uh, 84 resource elements. The, the smallest element is called the resource element, as you may see uh, right here. Can everyone see here, okay? That's called the resource element. The resource element is a very basic uh, resource under the OFDMA frame, okay? So when you turn on your cell phone, your cell phone will connect it to a base station and uh, the base station control the frequency and the time domain. So every cell phone should get uh, at least one resource element in order to communicate with other person, which means your friend, okay? So, RE is a very basic resource under this OFDMA frame. Okay, but in this paper, we try to enlarge the RE uh, to RB. So, RB is considered larger than a single element RE, okay? So, let me give you what is D2D. <coughs> In current communication, current communications, your cell phone needs to send the data to base station. Then from base station, they can forward the, your data to another uh, cell phone, or we call it UE, user equipment, user equipment. A new technology is called the D2D, which allows the cell phone directly transmit the data to another uh, UE or receiver without uh, going through the base station. So that's called the D2D, device to device. So you get the advantage, right, for the fast, uh, quick uh, communications because data does not have to go through a base station. If you go to base station, that will in incur some latency, some packet delay. 
So you don't want to go to the base station, you just send the data to your neighbor friends. For example, if you are here, your friends are there, your data can convert directly to another site. So they don't have to go to the base station. Okay, that's the basic idea. So how, could, how can we allocate the resources to those D2D? Okay, all right, so the next one we show you the frequency reuse. Let's see. We use uh, different colors, okay? Uh, if there is a two, uh, the pair, there is a two pair that adjacent together, which means blue and the green, then they need to use the different different frequencies. These two pairs cannot use the same frequency because they are close together. They can interfere. The frequency can be interfered. So, but uh, for example, these two green color, two pairs in green color, they can use the same frequency because they are kind of distance away, right? So the frequency will not interfere to each other. So these two green color, because they are kind of distance away, so they can use the same frequency. So we can allocate this same color, same frequency to this pair, this pair, and this pair, all right? And the blue color, they use the different frequency, okay? The basic idea. That's the previous work, okay? There are a bunch of the authors, they are focusing on this area, but the, due to the time limit, I don't want to go through uh, one by one. Uh, I propose here their pros and the cons, okay? And our paper. Our paper, of, of course, is uh, considered a better approach than the previous work, okay? This is the one we propose, called the RACG, okay? And uh, we want to convert it to a graph. So. Uh, a, a circle represents a D to D pair, means which means there is one sender and the one receiver. Okay, and uh, we use a different color for different uh, frequencies. So the the pop the uh, <coughs> purple color it's not purple, but you know it's the the uh, what uh, red color. Okay, that can assign to this pair and uh, this pair, and uh, the yellow color assigned to this pair, the blue color assigned to this pair. All right. <clears throat> because they are con they are uh, adjacent together. These two, these three pairs, they are adjacent together, so they are not. Uh, they cannot use the same frequency. All right. So we use a different color for allocate the resources block. Okay. But here then we we try to model the problem with some mathematics. So again, from the graph theory, we use the node. We use the node and uh, the link represents the, the uh, interference between two D2D pair or called the edge, okay? Vertice represents a D2D pair and the edge represents interference between two D2D pair. Then we convert it to a matrix. A relational matrix represents interference between two D2D pair, all right? Okay, then we have the interference graph as such as like this. But instead of going to the algorithm, let me give you a, a simple example, okay? Um, um, the basic idea is we try to uh, get the largest complete graph, okay? The, the largest complete graph, because this is a better way to allocate the resource block. Okay, all right? The largest complete graph, again, Okay, as, as I say, let me give you a concrete example. Then you will know, all right, let me see. Oh, I'm sorry. This is not a PPT, okay, because this converted to PDF already. Uh, and the chairman said I cannot use PPT, so, so save some time. Uh, see, this is a graph with the largest uh, uh, complete graph. And we already assigned the different colors to each pair, all right, green color, and the uh, yellow color, blue color, and the uh, gray colors, okay? And uh, each pair, they will uh, request the, the number of resource block. For example, this pair, green pair, they request three resource block, and uh, they have the, uh, the, the distance <coughs> between, between them, all right? All right, so the finally, you know, this is a motion picture, but I cannot present the motion picture. So just uh, present you the final graph, okay? So um, 
we we compare as a simple model. It's called the RADG. All right, uh, RADG means resource block allocation using degree based uh, greedy, degree based greedy. So which means we allocate the RB to D to D pair in a sequence beginning from the node with the largest degree. Okay, largest degree. Okay, so we compare this two together, RACG with RADG. So what, what, what should we compare? Again, we need to save the bandwidth in terms of RB, right? So we compare how many RB are consumed for different methods, RACG versus RADG. So finally, let me show you the final result. Okay, and of course, for simulation, we need to, to produce some topology. We compare the hotspot topology, which means uh, all the UE are concentrated in the uh, around in the base station. All right, they are very high density around the base station. Random means the uh, uniform, basically uniformly distributed. That's called the random. Okay, and for uh, hard spa, we also present two different hard spa. One is called the high density hard spa. The other one is called the low density hard spa. Uh, the difference is it's, uh, the, for the high density, you, you may see uh, all the nodes, they are concentrated in the center, all right, around in the base station. For low density hot spot, they are more uh, loosely coupled, distributed, okay? So then how, how much the bandwidth we can save? For hot spot, we can see, okay, uh, we, we uh, give you the parameter called the OFDMA frame utilization. That's the ratio of RB in use versus the total RB. And uh, again, here we said uh, we compare different uh, methods with different uh, node degree. For, for node degree three, compare to node degree 18, okay? Three and 18. And our method shows uh, better, okay? This is our method. Shows the, the ut frame utilization it's higher than uh, the I, I mean, I, RADG is low. Our measure, I'm sorry, uh, our measure is called the RACG compared to RADG, okay? So this is RACG, that's RADG, okay? Let's go back to these two different measures. RACG versus RADG, this is the, the approach we, we, we presented. This is a reference model called the RADG, okay? So, so this diagram shows you how much bandwidth we can save, how much bandwidth we can save. Again, for different uh, uh, degree. This is degree three. This is degree eighteen. Okay, not the degree eighteen, not the degree uh, three. All right. And uh, for random topology, we also compare IDG to ICG. So again, all all is uh, can save a. Um, relative the large bandwidth compared to IDG. Okay, and uh, we give you another diagram. For D2D pairs equal to 30, and the D2D pair equal to 60, so as the number increase, you can say the, the IDG almost, uh, you know, utilize all the bandwidth. But for ICG, we can still have some empty RB left. For, for degree equal to 30, you see, the two uh, methods also has some uh, relatively differences, okay? And uh, that's quick, right? Finally, it's my conclusion. Okay, I presented the UR RB allocations using complete graph, and the D2D pair in hard spa topology, RCG performs better than IDG in terms of frame utilization, particularly when the degree of D2D pairs is increased from 30 to 60. Okay, D2D pair in random topology, ICG performs better than IDG in terms of U, simply when the D2D pair is increased. Okay, when the number of D2D pair increase from 30 to 60, ICG can save about 15% of RB usages. Okay, that's my presentation, thank you so much. Any question? No? Okay, thank you so much.